Well, hello there and welcome to this video. You have just been listening to number nine from Kabbaleski's 30 children's pieces, which is a little fable. Now, to get us going, I'm going to refer to the Oxford Dictionary just to get a definition of what a fable actually is. And in the Oxford Dictionary, they say it's a short story, typically with animals as characters, conveying a moral. And you'll see as we go through this video, and also within the, uh, the resources, the People Workbook, I have these beautiful, beautiful watercolour um, illustrations, which you will be able to use with your pupils as well. And I know when I think of fables, I'm probably, the first thing I think about is Aesop's fables. So we have the likes of the fox and the grapes, the eagle and the turtle, the fox and the sick lion, and I think the peacock and the magpie is another one. And again, if you type any of those fables into, into Google, go to videos, there are very short animated videos which tell the story. I mean, literally within two to four minutes. Um, so it gives your pupils an idea of what a fable actually is. So this is what we're going to be looking at um, with regard to a little fable in this video today. So the musical concepts and pianistic skills that I'm going to be taking you through are, number one, we've got phrasing. Number two, I'm going to be getting you to orally identify, so just by listening, um, musical concepts um, that feature in this piece. Third thing, identify specific musical concepts. And that's where I'm going to be suggesting that you go off to your, your local office supply store um, and get a really big blown up copy of the score. Um, if you imagine it's almost like flip chart size. So a really large copy of the score. And then there are resources in the um, under the work uh, the workbook area of the January curiosity box and you can go there and print out a couple of cards so there's an activity for pupils um, with number three number four write the missing bits I'll come to that in a bit and explain that and then the fifth thing is to create a short story or getting your pupils to create a short story so here we go Phrasing is the first thing. For me, a little fable uh, has got eight phrases. Um, and each of those eight phrases that I've identified begins on beat four. Now, I am just going to say this because phrasing is one of those uh, subjective areas and I would encourage you to go through the score and consider alternative phrasing. Um, so you might agree with what I've done, you might disagree, uh, and you, you may come up with any number of other alternatives. So here are the eight phrases. I'm going to play each phrase in turn, and I'm gonna leave this slide here so that you get to see exactly where those phrases are occurring. Okay, so here is phrase one. Phrase two. Onto phrase three. Phrase four. Phrase 
Now, in order for pupils to become more consciously aware of phrasing, I know something that I do quite a lot in my teaching is I get them to sing the phrases because when they sing, they have to be really conscious of where they take a new breath. And another idea is getting pupils to imagine that they're playing phrases on, let's say, a woodwind instrument. And I like this for three different reasons. The first is, again, they're becoming conscious of where to take a new breath. So if you're imagining the right hand part of a little fable being played by an oboe and the left hand part being played by a bassoon, if you're playing either of those instruments, you've got to know where to take a new breath. Woodwind instruments uh, or woodwind instrumentalists are very conscious of their breathing. They've got to be. Uh, the second thing is to understand, um, for pianists to understand, how different colours can be achieved between the hands. So again, they might imagine that the oboe player is playing more loudly than the bassoon player and then maybe switching around the roles. And I'm gonna be demonstrating that at the piano in just a moment. The third thing is for pupils to become a little bit more familiar with the timbre of different instruments. And I know that my pupils, I don't give them the exposure to um, the sound worlds of different instruments just as much as I, I really should. And so let's just imagine, again, the left hand part of a little fable is being played by the bassoon, the right hand is being played by the oboe, and you'll see here again I've just got two um, pictures of what those instruments look like. And I'm now going to introduce you to this website. Some of you may have come across this before. It's philharmonia.co.uk forward slash explorer forward slash instruments. And this is a fantastic resource. I, I came across this as I was researching this um, to be able to put this video together for you. And you get a video, um, for example, there you can see that Amy Harmon, who is joint principal um, bassoonist um, with the Philharmonia Orchestra, she plays her instrument, she uh, explains how it works. Um, so I do suggest that you go across there and get your pupils um, to have a look at, at that website as well. Really, really useful. Um, so I'm going to play a, a little bit, um, just phrase five and phrase six. So just a couple of bars. And the first time you'll notice that my right hand projects. And then the second time, it's my left hand. And this is a lovely way that within this piece, A Little Feeble, um, you can bring colour. And again, if you imagine it, getting, getting the pupil to imagine it, um, with those woodwind instruments, rather than just your left hands playing more loudly uh, and vice versa, it's a really nice way to think about it. So have a lesson. All right, so moving on to point number two, orally identify musical concepts. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to play through the entire piece. And as you listen, I'd like you to work out, is it in three, four, or is it in four, four? Allegro or adagio? Is it legato or staccato? Um, are the hands an octave apart or are they a sixth apart? Is there 18 bars or do we have 24 bars? In terms of the rhythm, do you mainly hear crotchets and quavers or crotchets and semi-quavers? Is the piece in a major key or in a minor key? And do you hear any chromatic passages? 
And this is a way that you can introduce pieces to pupils. And what I've got here is an array of various musical concepts. And then you or your pupil have to listen and decide, is it one or the other? Okay, here we go. find that by actually having a screen in front of you with um, with options made that a little bit easier. So what I was doing was I was giving you a focus. So um, I'm not going to go through all the answers but um, from listening to that uh, you should have been able to hear that the time signature was 4-4. Four four. Um, it was mainly staccato the hands were an octave apart and there were 18 bars. Okay, moving on to number three, identify specific musical concepts. Now, what I suggest you do is get a copy of the score that is an A1 or A2 size copy. So if you kind of imagine flip chart size, uh, again, you'll obviously need to find um, an office supplies company somewhere where they have the facilities to be able to create large sized scores. But this in itself can be really useful for pupils. Um, and then in the January Curiosity Box, I have um, within one of the documents a set of cards. Uh, you can see two here. So there's E minor triads and C sharp major triad. And the idea is that with this super big sized score, the pupil uh, has a marker pen and let's say they pick out E minor triads. The card says that, so it means they go to the score and they've got to identify all the E minor triads. Um, or they've got to find that chromatic passage where there you've got a series of six consecutive notes descending chromatically. Moving on then to number four, write the missing bits. Here you've got the first six bars, um, almost six bars, of a little fable. And I'm going to just flick onto the next slide. Because then you can see, number one, what the pupil has got to do is write the descending E minor triad in root position using three crotchets. So under the number one, they've got to add that in. And again, if you haven't already realised, I'm sure you have by this point, that a little fable moves entirely in octaves between the right hand and the left hand part. Um, so again, that is an activity that your pupils can do. It's inside um, the pupil workbook for this particular piece. And finally, your pupils might create a short story. So going back to that idea of what a fable is, um, your pupil can choose an animal character, decide upon the moral of the story, and again that's where some of those YouTube videos might come in useful, um, and then they create eight different scenes to tell their story. And um, the reason I say eight is it's based on the eight phrases. Or again, you, you and your pupil might come up with a different number of phrases, that's perfectly okay. So, but the idea is that there is a scene per phrase. So I hope that's been really useful and I look forward to seeing you really soon. Bye for now.
And hey, this is just a really quick PS. It's the website of the Philharmonia Orchestra and I'm just going to give you a couple of insights into the videos that I referred to earlier on. Hope you enjoy. Some composers have used the oboe to carry some of the main tunes in their writing for the orchestra. An example of one of my favourite tunes that the oboe plays in the orchestral repertoire is this from the slow movement of Brahms' Violin Concerto. My name is Amy Harmon and I'm principal bassoon of the Philharmonia Orchestra. The bassoon is a woodwind instrument and you play it by using double reeds, which are so cool because it's two pieces of bamboo tied together and when you blow it vibrates.